And I'm going to do ready view. Oh, sorry. That's not the one I wanted. <laughs> We're looking at it. There you go. All right. So I'm Miss Jan. I'm one of the educators at the SciTech Discovery Center. And I'm here to kind of help guide you through learning about some dyes. It's called kitchen chemistry. So, Miss Lauren. And I'm Miss Lauren. I'm also one of the educators here. I'm going to be helping kind of talk about when we started making dyes and then we're going to look at the different shades we can make with some of the beautiful dyes from our kitchen. So we are going to get started by talking about when dyes became a thing. So if any of you were in our, first, in our webinar about painting, you'll know that people started making colors from things they found in nature a long, long time ago. So we started using things like dirt, or they would use the soot from bones that they would have in their fires after cooking. So they went around and saw lots of beautiful colors in nature. One of the most famous ones is called ochre, which is made from dirt, and we can get lots of different shades, such as yellow and brown, orange and red, and that's all different dirt that was then washed, and then the colorful parts of it were taken away from the dirty parts, and people started using it as paint. It can also be used as a dye. Now, these different colors were used to make cave art, which we also have seen. And as you'll notice, all of these different paintings have a couple of things in common. It's that they don't really have a large variety of colors. They're all colors you would already find in nature, like brown, because dirt is usually brown or red or yellow. So people had to get creative and they realized that if they were able to use things such as berries or flowers or different types of plants, they can make a wider variety of colors and they could start dyeing fabrics. So our fabrics were made using dyes and the difference between a dye and a paint is that a dye actually creates a chemical bond with the fabric. So instead of just sitting on top of it like paint would, it bonds with it. And so that's why even when we wash it, it doesn't come out. So you can kind of think of paint like somebody putting on makeup. So they put that on, but later when they take a shower, it washes off. But if somebody dyes their hair, it actually chemically bonds to it so even when they wash it, the color still stays there. So that's what people were doing with dyes. And here you can see the oldest rug in the world. It was made in 2,500 in Siberia. And it still has all these bright colors that we can see because it chemically bonded together, it didn't wash off. So today, we are gonna be looking at making some of these beautiful dyes using things that you would have around your kitchen. I think Miss Janet's gonna show us some dyes that she's made. All right, well, we're gonna start with this one. Miss Lauren talked about how um, the people use things that they found around them. They use dirt, they use plants, they use, they use fruits. And in Mexico, they use this little weird little bug that's called a cochineal. So um, this might not be something you would have in your kitchen, but it is a really cool type of dye. So what I did is I've just made a really quick little video to explain to you how it was used and what it um, looks like and shows you how you can change it, which is really cool because sometimes with the dye, you might end up with one color, but some dyes, you can actually add things to them. That's where the chemistry comes in. And you can make multiple ranges of colors. So let me know if you can't see the video, because I had a little problem with that last time. So let's, can you see it, Miss Lauren? I don't see a video playing yet. Okay, all right. Let me hear it, though. The share. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. All right. Antenna. 
they kind of look like. All right, let me start this again. Okay, there we go. Sail insects are strange tiny animals, often with no visible legs or antenna. They kind of look like plant nipples. Cochineal scales live on prickly hair and cover their wee bodies in a white, fluffy wax. Why are these little insects so red under all that fluff? A shell of the cochineal contains vibrant red chemical carminic acid. This color actually evolved to pale ants. The Aztecs and Incas in Central and South America were the first to discover ways to use cochineal bugs to make pigments that could color fabrics and other materials. This dye was once so highly prized that bags of the dry bugs were used as currency. Spaniards who colonized the areas in the 1500s took the cochineal process back to Europe. The red color was used to dye the coats of Catholic cardinals and the jackets that gave the British red coat soldiers their name. We use this dye today in candy, like food like Jello, and even makeup. If the list of ingredients on a product lists carmine or carminic acid, it was made from the cochineal insect. Cochineal goes by different names on food and cosmetic labels, such as cochineal, carmine, carminic acid, natural red 4, or E14. Carminic acid is pH dependent. pH is a measure of hydrogen ion concentration, a measure of the acidity or alkalinity of a solution. You can change the color of this dye from dark purple to light orange, depending on whether you add an acid or a base. In the following video, after I make the dye, I'm going to change it by adding a base, which is our sodium carbonate and an acid, which will be vinegar. So I'm going to start by grinding up some of the cochineal using a mortar and pestle. It needs to be ground up to a fine powder, and you can see how the red is already starting to show. Next, I'm going to add some water in order to make our dye more liquid. I'm going to use my pipette to divide the cochineal dye into three sections so that we can do our experiment to see how we can change the colors by adding a base and an acid. I'm going to make a little extra of the red by adding some more water. And then I'm going to drop some on the paper towel on the side. I want you to check later on to see if that red is still a bright red. So our first experiment is going to be adding vinegar to the cochineal. And you can see what happens right away. So what color did it change? Right, that's an orange. And I'm going to drop some on the side so you can see on the white paper towel what that orange color looks like. In the third section, I'm going to add this sodium carbonate and want we'll to see what happens. What color did I make? It's a beautiful purple, isn't it? And I'm going to drop some milk on the side so you can see how it looks. Well, now I thought it would be fun to see if I could change them back. I added an acid to the side where the base was. Oh, look what happened. It made an orange bit. Not quite the same orange as the first one, is it? So then I decided to go back and add the sodium carbonate to I where it had the acid in. What happened? We get purple again. Is it quite the same? Is it the same as the first purple or just a little bit different? So I could keep mixing and experimenting and coming up with all kinds of oranges and purples and reds. And that's kind of what I did. And this is some fabric that I dyed with the cochineal colors that I made. And then I turned it into a pillow. Scale insects are nope. straight. Good one. All right. So I'm going to go back to this. Did you?
Did you know that you could make dye from bugs? I mean, I thought that was pretty cool. You can actually order the cochineal bugs if you want to try this at home, but it's usually not something that people have in their kitchen, but it is a, a really cool um, thing for you to see. All right, so we're going to move on to Miss Lauren's part, and she's actually going to show you something that you probably do have in your kitchen. So I started making some dye with blackberries. Who here likes blackberries? Anybody? I love blackberries. They're so yummy and they taste so good. So I always have them in my fridge. So I realized that by using those, I would be able to make a color of dye. Now it can take a while, so I've already made it, but on this slide, you can see how to do it. So first you have to put your blackberries in a bowl and you smush them all up. So I used a cup of blackberries and then two cups of water. So you just have to do a two or a one to two ratio. So put your blackberries into a bowl, smush them up. I actually don't even have a, a potato masher, so I just used a fork and kind of got them so that they were smushed and they were starting to release their juice. Then I put it onto a stove and I let it boil for 15 minutes. By doing this, it's, the heat is making the blackberries release even more color. Once I did that, I poured it into a strainer and all the liquid was able to drain down and all the mushy little blackberry bits stayed outside. So that actually took a while. I let it strain all night so I could get all the color out. So I'm going to show you guys what I got and then we're going to see how we can use it. So I'm going to show first. So this is the dye I ended up with. So by using one cup of blackberries, I got about one cup of dye. So it's pretty dark in here, but we're gonna see the different kinds of colors that I can make with it. I am going to... Okay, so this is my little science center. What we're first going to do is we're going to just look at a normal blackberry. But before I do any of this, I'm going to put on a pair of gloves because we're talking about dyeing. So obviously the blackberry is going to stain my skin and so I have to be really careful. If you're using any of this stuff at home, make sure you're not doing it with anything that you don't want to accidentally get color on. So if I take this blackberry, I'm gonna just see what will happen if I smush it onto a piece of paper. So this is gonna be my original one. So I'm just gonna smush it into this little circle so we can see what color it produces. So I have my original one. So this is the color that just a blackberry makes. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at what happens when I dilute my different blackberry dye into different waters. So Miss Jan talked about the different colors you could get by changing the pH of something using vinegar, vinegar or things like baking soda or other things you might have. I'm just using normal water. So my test tubes are helping me measure it out precisely. In each of these, I have 10 milliliters of water. I'm then gonna use my syringe to help me measure it and make it precise. If I start with the first one, I'm going to put in a full 10 milliliters of my dye and I'm gonna see how dark it becomes. My first one. Look how dark that's getting. So that's my darkest one because it's going to have the most. But if I add more water, I'm diluting it. So diluting is when you have one thing and by adding something else, you're making it less of the original. So for this one, I'm going to put six, six milliliters into this test tube. See, that's a bit lighter. 
And for this one, I'm going to put just two. And we'll see the comparison of colors. So if I go from darkest to lightest like this, let's see how they look on paper. So this is how you could make different shades of one color. So if you like pink, maybe you like dark pink, so you would keep an original color. But if you would prefer something like light pink, you could always take the paint that you originally had and change it. So we have the first color. Now let's see what happens with the second one. I'm gonna use my little paintbrush. And I'm just gonna start adding it on there. So obviously with the water, it's a lot fainter because it's not able to bind like a dye would. So I have my two different colors like that. Now let's see my third one. So this one only had six milliliters instead of 10. So that's even fainter, a lot more watery. And then finally, I can use the fourth one and you can barely see any color at all. So it became so diluted with the water that my dye brew is barely able to produce any color. So this can be done to change the different colors of your dyes and it's a great way to practice your measuring and see different types of dilution. So Ms. Jan's going to show us several artists that use natural dyes to produce their own beautiful art. I thought I would share some fabric first. This is, can we make that? There you go. So this is fabric that was dyed with the blackberry, okay? This one was not diluted. And you can see how nice and dark it is. And then this one was the diluted dye, okay? So, um, Keep in mind too that when you dye fabric, you know how Ms. Lauren said that it's going to soak in, but you have to add something to the fabric called a mordant. And I actually have some, some wet fabric over here and I actually wash this with salt water. So putting a mordant like salt water or alum will help the dye stay in the fabric. So I am going to share Okay, so before I share, I want you to raise your hand if you have coffee or tea at your house. How many of you have coffee or tea? Okay, well, um, I'm going to, and I'm going to move my camera over here. So if it makes you dizzy, close your eyes for a minute. This is my little display area and I'm going to move my cloth here. So coffee has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. This is some green coffee, okay? So that's how coffee starts. And they call it a coffee bean, it's actually a seed. Um, so this is without its outer covering. And then you roast it. And this is one, like one roasting, like maybe about two or three minutes. And then this one was roasted a little bit longer. And even longer, you can see how it's starting to get a little darker, okay? And then this is the darkest. Now, people who roast their own coffee know it really, if you roast it this long, it's actually burnt and then it tastes awful. But for my purposes, I needed it to be dark. So I roasted mine really dark. And then I also have some black tea, and this is just tea from a tea bag but this is loose tea. So tea is also a plant. So I'm going to show you an artist who likes to paint with coffee. Anybody know you could paint with coffee and dye with coffee? All right, so we're gonna go back to this slide. And here we go. So here's my coffee beans again from green, first roasting, so it's like, I roasted a little bit, I always really dark, so that's what I wanted, okay? 
And then here's some loose tea. This is black tea. So you can also use um, coffee and tea as a dye. And people have been using that for many, many years. Actually, people started dyeing with tea in order to hide stains on the tablecloth because people were drinking their coffee and tea and putting their cups down and then they were staining the cloth. And so they would, they would just dye it in order to hide those stains. But there are some artists today who also like to paint with coffee. And this is an example of one artist I'm going to show you. Let me make sure. And can we see that or not? Not yet. Can you guys see that? Okay. So, all right. So I have to go to new share. We're learning. Okay. So now you should be able to see that. Can everybody see that video? So I'm going to do, all right, so, so that was an artist. She does live in Texas and she paints with coffee. So I'm going to, um, that was going to be the end and I'm going to do a painting. So if any of you have some coffee ready, you want to paint along with me, you can, or you can do it later. But I did want to share some fabric first. So this is what coffee looks like on fabric it is just kind of a tan color so this one's coffee and this one is tea it's a little bit redder and different teas can give you different tones okay and then just for fun i did one that was tie-dye so if you have an old t-shirt at home you can whip up a whole big pot of coffee or use some that's left over from your parents and, you know, use some rubber bands and uh, wrap up your, your, uh, your shirt and dip it in the coffee and see what you get. Okay. So I have some coffees here and this is a little frog that I did. And I sent a video if you guys wanted to draw with me. It does look pretty dark. So Lauren talked about, Ms. Lauren talked about diluting the coffee, even though it was really, really dark when I made it, did not look really dark when I started painting with it. So when I paint with it, I have to do something called layering. So I already have one layer I'm going to turn off the light over here because that's too bright. Hang on, just one minute. Make it a little darker. There you go. All right, so I already have a layer of coffee here. So because it's already pretty diluted, even though that's pretty dark, it looks pretty dark in there, doesn't it? And this is the coffee. And this is some tea. So in order to make my colors darker, I start putting layers down and I have to allow it to to dry in between the layers. And this is the way you work with watercolors too. And I'm pretty sure the girl in the video, this is what she would do. Although she could probably make some darker coffees with the espresso, which is usually pretty thick. I didn't have an espresso maker at my house, so I couldn't do that. But I'm just gonna keep adding more and more layers of coffee into the parts of the frog that I want to get much darker. So I have to allow my 
layers in between to dry and then they're going to be much darker. I want to spill my coffee. So there's my frog that I'm working on. You can see how some parts are darker. The tea I added in just for fun because the tea has a little bit of a different kind of brown. Now you're like saying, oh, it's just all brown. Well, a painting that's done all in one color is called monochromatic. And a lot of artists like to do that where they just paint with one color. So if you have some leftover coffee at your house, grab a piece of paper, draw a picture, and have some fun adding some color to it, okay? So the last thing I wanted to show you, and I'm gonna move my paintings here, is what it's going to look like on fabric. So I have my wet fabric here. Now, when you wanna dye fabric, you wanna make sure it's wet. You never wanna dry, I mean dye dry fabric. You want to make sure it's wet. And this is the one I showed you earlier that I said I washed in salt water. Okay, so that's going to help my coffee color stay. So I'm going to dip this in, in the coffee. And it's not going to be real dark because when I dyed the other pieces I showed you, I actually let them stay in the dye overnight so that the colors would be really, really, really dark. So the nice thing about dyeing, if you get it out and you dry it and you don't like it, you can put it back in the dye. Just make sure you save it. So that's my coffee. I'm going to squeeze some of this off. And you can see what it looks like. That's actually a pretty nice little tan. I like that color. And then let's see how the tea looks. So if anybody at your house is making masks, you could have some fun dyeing your own fabric. And then when it's dry, you can make your own mess. And then this is the tea. Not a whole lot of difference between these, but if you could see in the better light, you could see the tea is just a little bit redder than the coffee. Okay, so those are some ways that you can use some things at your house to make, um, to dye fabric or to paint with or just to experiment with. All right, so Miss Lauren, did you have anything you wanted to add? I do not. I think that was very good. Um, do do we, we want to unmute everybody and see if they have any questions?